Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Today, we're gonna talk about the 10 essential tools that every installer should have. And the reason why we're talking about this now is because it's the holiday season. Yeah, definitely. That's right, so it's the time for giving and receiving. <laughs> mainly giving. Yes. Or mainly receiving. I don't know which one it is. You ask. I like to get stuff. So anyway, so I guess that would be receiving. Yeah. Anyways, what we put together, the two of us, yep. is a list of 10 things that every installer should have. Now, whether you're a guy that just does it on the weekend for buddies, you just do it as a hobby, whatever, you should have these 10 things in your arsenal to do any install. Right. So, first up that is the multimeter. That's right. This tool is essential for just about anything because our eyes can't see electrons moving through power wire we need a digital multimeter. Let's look at a few digital multimeters that you might be interested in. Now digital multimeters come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and price points. From something as simple as this guy right here, that's like $15, the leads and everything fit in this nice little carrying case. It'll do AC, DC, ohm, continuity. Something a little bit more expensive like this, this will allow you to, this has the positive probe built into the tip here, ground it. You can test fuses real easy along with any other thing you'd need to do in the 12 volt world. You have something like this. This is a Fluke 114. There again, it'll do all the same things that these will do. It's just a little bit better build. All the way up to something like this, which is the TPI Scope 440. This has a digital multimeter and an oscilloscope built into it. You're definitely gonna want to get one of these because this will allow you to tell ohm load on a speaker, see if there's a short in your wiring, figure out what kind of battery voltage you have, test to see if there's a break in the wiring. Basically anything that goes wrong in the car audio world you can use one of these tools to figure out. So if you're an installer, you definitely want to get a multimeter. All installers need to take dashes out, radios, door panels. You don't want to scratch it. You don't want to break it. So what do you need? Next up, panel tools and pry tools. So panel and pry tools come with all different shapes, sizes, functionalities, and yes, colors. And they do different things, so depending on what you're trying to pry apart, you want to make sure you have the right panel tool for it. Because after all, you don't want to scratch, break, or bend something. So for removing a radio out of a dash, you'll want something like these. These are nylon panel tools. You have a pry bar here, you have a wedge, you have a puller, and you have just a general pry tool. And then for removing door panels and body clips, you know, really deep into the car, you have something like this guy where you can reach in and get to it. This, of course, is the most popular one right here. This will allow you to get door panels off, pull those pesky clips out real easily. This one's nice if you don't, if you can't pry on it. This one will actually, you can slide it in and pull the surface off like this. This guy here is designed to grab onto some of those pesky ones and then pry it off as well. So there's a ton of different functionality. If I was to just recommend one right off the bat, I would definitely pick up this guy here. And then secondly, I'd pick up a really nice set of vinyl pry tools. The next that every aspiring installer or installer should have is a tone generator. Tone generators are an amazing tool. It allows you to create sound from a handheld device. So if you're testing an amplifier, trying to figure out if a speaker actually still works, or just need to move something, a tone generator will do that for you. Let's take a look. Now for tone generators, there are two that we use. The Little Pack Audio TLPTG2, this guy right here, this is the most essential one. We use this thing daily and, and many times throughout the day. What this allows you to do is plug into an amplifier, plug into a speaker, make noise. <laughs> just like that. As you can guess, there are tons of things you can do with it. This one also has a continuity tester built into it, so you can test RCAs. It's pretty helpful. You can vary the voltage, you can vary the frequency. It's not the cleanest thing in the world if you put it on oscilloscope, but remember, you're just testing things. You're not actually tuning things. Now, if you need the ultimate and clean and precision, that's where this guy comes in, the IMSG from SMD. This guy right here, this allows you to do similar things to this but it doesn't have the output voltage to test the speaker. This is mainly made to go into the input of an amplifier. You can vary the voltage here. There's a lot of things you can do with this other than just testing. You definitely wanna pick up one of these for sure. 
If you already have one of these, you may want to graduate into one of these guys here. So as an installer, one of the essential things that we use a ton of are zip ties. Yes, definitely. Zip ties are great for fastening just about anything. And also for creating a lot of blood um, right. and install. Yeah. When you cut the tip of a zip tie, it is the sharpest thing in the world. So what you're going to want to pick up as a cool installer is a set of flush cutters. These will allow you to cut the those pesky zip ties flush with the lock so that you don't run your arm across it and come back with a bloody stump. So the nice thing about flush cutters is they're just that. If you look on the back side of them, the blade actually files into the back of the cutter. Unlike a conventional cutter that comes in like this, a flush cutter comes in like that. So if you were to take a zip tie and zip tie it down to let's say a piece of wire like this, and you take your conventional cutter and cut it, what you've just done is you've created this nasty little little burr that sticks up there. That is very sharp. If you have a flush cutter, just go back over that same thing. Now it is perfectly flush, and as you can see, isn't gonna cause blood. Now there's a couple different flush cutters to choose from, and there again, shapes, sizes, and colors blue, orange, red, it really doesn't matter. What we've found over the years is that pretty much every flush cutter does about the same thing. They cut flush. So pick yourself up any color, whatever works for you. So working in the car, inside, it's kind of dark. Running the wires under the dash, all that stuff, sometimes it's kind of painful because you can't see. What do we need the next time on the list? that will be a work life. Now when doing installation, like Fernando said, being able to see what you're doing is very important. When we started, we started using this guy right here. This was a cool headlamp, had a couple LEDs on it, and it allowed us to see directly in front of us. It was nice. From there, we graduated onto this guy right here when we started doing filming. I like to refer to this as a light bomb. This is a LumaCube. This guy here has nine levels of brightness. This thing will light up anything. Okay, downside is it gets pretty hot because it's extremely small. We moved on to this guy here. This guy has a cool LED strip. It also has an LED in the end that allows us to see if we need to. It's fairly thin, so you can slide it into the engine bay, up into a dash, and you can illuminate things that are farther away. And then as you see in all the videos, what are hanging from the ceiling are these guys right here. This is a four foot with an extension right here and a rubber grip for mounting up on the ceiling or around an engine apartment. This particular one is cordless. It has a battery into it. It has two levels of brightness depending on what you're trying to do. And then of course we have the corded version of it which is the same thing just with a cord attached so when we're doing those all day jobs this will stay on all day. The cordless version only lasts about four hours. Regardless of which light you get Make sure you get some form of lighting so that you can see into the car. It reduces eye strain, and also if you have to look into dark cars all day long, it can give you a headache. No one wants a headache. This job can be hard enough as it is. So pick yourself up a really cool light. So one of the problems we run into is that there's never enough room behind a radio. Right. So factory radios are small, dashes are tight, and we have big bypasses we have to put in, and just a ton of wire. So a lot of the times you have to get in there and trim out the plastic behind the dash. Right. And to do that, there's a few tools that we use that are saws and roto zips. Now, if you have a cool cordless drill, like an M12, like we use from mm -hmm. Milwaukee, Makita makes them, DeWalt makes them, they all make cordless saws that are really awesome. As well as if you have an air compressor, you can get them too. So let's take a look at some of the tools we use for cutting dashes. Now depending on whether you have a big air compressor and you can do things like use air tools, you're gonna to wanna to pick yourself up something like an air saw like this. We have this guy here which is just a straight grinder with a roto zip bit in it. This is great, you guys see me use this all the time in install diaries when I have to wallow out holes in those dash kits. And then for getting up into the dash, this guy right here is an amazing tool. Because a lot of the times, like we said, you have to get up in there and remove plastic. This doesn't make a lot of vibration because it's very fast and it's easy to maintain. I Meaning you can get a good grip on it. 
It's a nice thing to hold in your hands and it allows you to get up into those dashes and do that fine intricate trimming that you need to do. Now, in some cases you gotta get up in there and cut some metal. For that, you're gonna wanna pick yourself up to something like this. This is a miniature Sawzall. It's got a little five inch blade on it. This thing is great if you have any metal in there that you need to cut. Not that you can't put a bimetal blade on something like this, you can, but sometimes you just need a workhorse to get in there and remove the big things. Sometimes you need to remove screws from almost impossible parts like the windshield, uh, it's really tight and you can fit like a, just a regular wrench or you screw gun. So what do we need? The skew drive. Now one of the essential tools for installation as far back as I can remember started with the Makita 9.6 volt and has graduated on to other versions of it is a right angle drill because it allows you to get in to unscrew things fairly easily. You can pull the tip out, you can put the bit in here, you can shrink the distance between whatever is here and the bit. It's really nice. However, that's not always the case. That's where these guys come in line. This is a skew driver, and what a skew driver is designed to do is it is a right angle drill. So you can now put this in here like this, get up into the corner of a dash or something like that, and take the screw out. We have three different ones that we use here. We have just a metal one, the original has it's called, skew driver from Milwaukee. We have a little short stubby if we don't need a lot of distance. This guy's kind of cute, isn't it? And of course we have this guy here. I have no idea where I got it. Anyways, regardless of which one you get, just get one because it will save you so much time. These things are awesome. So one of the tools that we use every single day there, it's literally stuck on the side of my workbench because we use it so much. I have multiple versions of it depending on what I'm trying to do with it. Is a soldering iron. Yeah. This allows us to do a multitude of things, but mainly connect two things together that are wire or wire to a terminal so that they will never come apart again. If you don't have one, you should get one, and we're gonna show you a couple. Now for soldering, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Like these are soldering guns, this is like a soldering pen or iron or whatever you want to call it. This one here takes butane. Uh, they have new electric ones that unfortunately I can't show you right now. We don't have, I'm sorry. Anyways, depending on what you're trying to solder, one of these will do the job. Now, as just a what do I get, you're going to want to probably get a gun first because this will do the most. Now, if you're trying to do intricate soldering as far as little tiny things, you want to get something like this solder station here. This allows you to actually pick the temperature that you're going to solder these things at so you don't burn things. But if you're like trying to solder on ring terminals or just regular harnesses together, something like this is great. Uh, this is my preferred one here. It's got a cool light in the bottom of it. Um, it gets super hot. Weller makes a really nice soldering gun too. This is gonna be the affordable. If you're just looking to get one to get started, pick yourself up a Weller. They're available everywhere. This will do mostly everything you need it to do. They have replaceable tips, because uh, the tips do burn out. And then when you're ready to get on to something that can stay on all day, and or you have a lot of work to do, a lot of repetitious work where you don't wanna be holding the button all the time, pick yourself up a nice soldering station. Having something like a butane or electric is also nice too because you can then take it into the car for quick little installs. A little power wire here, a little power wire there, we just need to do quick soldering jobs. It's nice to have the mobility of those. But there again, something like this will do pretty much anything you need. So if you don't have one, definitely pick one up, get yourself a soldering iron. One of the key things as an installer is being able to test wires to see what the wire is doing because you have your tone generator, mm -hmm. you have your digital multimeter. Right. You need to be able to attach those onto wires to see what is happening in those wires. You don't want to just grab a pair of crimpers, strip the wire back and see what it's going because then you end up with a car that has a bunch of exposed wiring. For that, we have the test probes. Now like we said, being able to use your meter or your tone generator to test a wire like this guy right here, you're gonna to wanna to get something like these. These are the power probe wire probes. So this guy has a little hook on there which allows you to grab the wire and on the other end it has a twist and as you twist this guy here, it will go ahead and send a piercer into the wire. Then on the end here, you can attach your multimeter or tone generator. So for example, go ahead and grab this piece of wire right here twist this guy in, and now you're hooked up to it, 
You can then attach your probe like this if you're testing for voltage, test the other end to ground. If you have a set like this, this is what we use to test speakers when we're doing high level to low level. So we can test them with continuity first and then move over to the tone generator to make sure that they're the right speaker. So, and then when you're done, if it's not the right wire, you can easily just unscrew it so you can move on to the next one. You don't end up with, you know, you don't have to do this to jam in there or take a pointy pick tool and do the same thing, you know, where you run the risk of running it out the other side and going into another wire in the harness. This is just a safer way to probe a wire. So if you're doing a lot of probing for high level to low level, testing for voltage, putting in alarm systems, you name it, get yourself a set of these guys here. Now, you notice there's a yellow one. This is for bigger wires. After you're done with your install, one of the most important things is making sure that all your speakers are going in the right direction that you want them to go in. Right. You may intentionally have some going in opposite directions. That's entirely up to you. But you want to make sure they're all going in the direction you want them to go in. And for that, you need a tool. Yes. You need a tool that tests polarity. So we have some polarity tools that you, as an aspiring installer or an installer, might want to add to your toolbox. Making sure the speakers are going in the right direction after an install is the difference between an amazing sounding system or it sounding like dog poop. Have any of you ever hooked up a subwoofer backwards to another one to where they were moving like this and were like, how come I have no bass? Then you put them in the right direction and all of a sudden it just unleashed itself? Well, tweeters in mid-range are no different. If you wire tweeters out of polarity, you're gonna get weird things happening. There's a plethora of tools that you can use to test this from something as simple as this guy right here. This is a little $15 polarity tester. It's got a microphone built into the tip. Some of them come with CDs when you buy them. If they don't, we've actually put all the tracks for polarity testing on Dean and Fernando's tool drawer, which of course there's links in the description, so you can download them and use your phone to play them back and do the pop, pop, pop from your phone. Which brings us to another one. If you have an iDevice, you can download this app called Speaker Pop. What Speaker Pop does is you can use the headphone jack output, put it into the radio, and it'll make the pop, pop, pop sound. You simply put your phone next to all the speakers, and this will either give you a negative or a positive to tell you that it's in polarity. If you want to have something a little nicer, you could pick up this guy right here. This is the PT9A. This comes with a cool CD right here along with some other test tones on it. This has a microphone built into it. This also has an RCA built into it so you can directly feed it into an amplifier. And of course some test leads so that you can just hook it up to a speaker on the bench and see what direction it's going. These are great if you're trying to test like a tweeter and see which is positive and negative because they don't always come with markings on them. Now, this one is definitely gonna be the most expensive one. If you wanna go a little bit less and get something very similar in functionality, check out this guy right here from the install bay. This will allow you to do pretty much the same thing. It has a set of leads, has an output for going into an amplifier. It has a in-phase, out-of-phase light. It doesn't come with a CD though, so that is definitely the difference between these. However, regardless of whatever you pick, something as simple as a cool app on your phone, down to something like this guy right here from Mobile Solutions, get one. You're gonna thank yourself for it. There you go, there's 10 things as a professional or a hobbyist or whatever you are in between, you should get for your toolbox in order to make your job a little bit easier. Correct. These are tools we use every day of the week. Whether it be the inexpensive version or the expensive version, we have them because we use them. Right. So don't feel like you need to go out and buy the most expensive one unless you're just rolling deep like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then yeah. of course, get you know, bank it. Why not? Why not? But if you've got a loved one and they're trying to figure out what they need to get you for Christmas, tell them to watch this video and say, do me a favor, pick number four. Yes. Get me right. one of those. Okay. <laughs> now, where do you get this stuff? Well, of course, there's Dean and Fernando's tool drawer. We've been pimping that out for a while now, but we're going to make it easy for you. Down in the description below, all the stuff that we've talked about is going to be in the description. So we'll have it numbered 1 through 10. You can go ahead and pick the tool that you want to buy. It's going to take you over to a link to where you can go ahead and pick yourself up one of these. Of course, you can go pick yourself up one at any local tool store. Doesn't matter to us. Just get yourself one to make your life so much easier. All right, guys. 
that brings this one to an end. Thank you for watching. Fernando, if you please. All right. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us. Facebook, here in YouTube, Instagram, also in Twitter. You guys, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Have a great night as always, and we'll see you later next time. Bye.